My name is Sabata Mpo Mugai. I come from South Africa and I'm a writer. I work on a day-to-day -day as a journalist, but then I'm a writer. My real work is writing. Uh, journalism pays the bills. The best thing about being a writer in South Africa is the freedom of expression. Coming from a history of apartheid where we were not allowed to say some things, where there was oppression, where there were a lot of restrictions, after 1994, when Nelson Mandela became the president, we, we paid a lot of attention to these freedoms and rights. And one of those is the freedom of expression, which is quite important in my country. It's not only important to writers, it's important to cartoonists as well as, as even comedians. So the freedom of expression is the most loveliest thing about being a writer in South Africa at the moment. The worst thing is that in a country of 54 million, there are not so many avid readers. Uh, books are not selling as much, as much as they should sell in a country of 54 million. So a, a, a small number of readers in a country with such a population is, 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 a, is the worst thing about my country. South Africa has a, a history of apartheid. The ability of South African people to move from apartheid to democracy without civil war is the best thing so far. I think we, we have demonstrated to the world that you can actually resolve very painful political situations without bloodshed. There are two things that drive my writing. One is the theme. So the theme is South Africa's political history and the conditions of life back in my country. I write about that. I try to be as honest as I can. And I am very cautious of the fact that as a writer, I'm witness to the truth. And that a lot of people must actually rely on the written word. Uh, that drives me to write about that, to to chronicle a part of my history that was not chronicle in the mainstream history. And once I've done that, I feel that I've accomplished something. So every time when I finish writing a book, I feel like if I could die today, tomorrow morning, I'm not going to protest. I'll die with a broad smile because there is something that I've done. The good thing is books outlive writers. So long after I've died, thousand years after I've died, my books will make sure that I exist in the memories of people. I read all the time. I read mostly South African and African fiction. I'm drawn to Maria Maba. Recently, I read So Long a Letter, which she wrote. In South Africa, one of the most important things now is gender equality. We even have a government department dedicated to that. We had Commission on Gender Equality. And in Maria Maba's story, where she talks about polygamy, it's, it's touching to us. It's quite important to us because even our president is a polygamist. But we have never heard what women in polygamous marriages are saying, we've never heard their voices, we've heard men all the time. And Maria Maba is quite special to me in that sense. I'm also drawn to Nguguwa Tiongo, I'm drawn to Chinua Achebe, but also to writers of my generation in South Africa. I like their spirit, I like the fact that we are producing more books than it has ever happened in South Africa's history. So people like Nick Mthongo, Sipio Mahala, Zuki Swavaner, Tando Ngolozana, they are inspiring to me. I'm happy that I'm living at the same time with them. What people know about me back in South Africa is that 
it is an open secret that I am inspired by Saul Plucky. Um, Saul Plucky wrote a first English novel to be written by a black South African. It was published in 1930. But it's not only the historical importance of the novel that makes him important to me. The novel itself, it has the protagonist as a woman. And for him to write a novel like that, in those years, he was way ahead of his time. Muhudi, the character in the book, is, is a woman that many women in the New World in this time can look up to. She scared a, a lion that was about to attack. She led her men. Her bravery is, is shown throughout the book. She could stand her ground. I'm inspired by a character like that. I'm inspired by what is not the norm. And the norm is men are running the world. Men are messing up the world. Men are, des are deciding the fate of everybody. And in Mhudi, a woman has taken that role. When, and, and she comes on the scene in a time of war, where you have two men who are leading warring nations. And there is a woman who comes in and shines throughout the time. So Plague did a marvelous job during that time. And the fact that this is a historical novel, I'm drawn to that because I'm drawn to history. I, I want to know what happened in the past. And I cannot write novels that do not reflect on the history of my country. And maybe later, I will write novels that reflect on the history of Africa as a whole. So I would recommend Sol Plaki's Muhudi. Uh, it's, it's an old book. People have read it, but I still feel that more and more people need to read this novel. It has been translated into several European languages, but sadly, it has not been translated into indigenous South African and African languages. I hope it gets translated into those. The state has a responsibility to support literature financially. We have seen amazing interventions by the government in South Africa. Um, there are few grants that writers do get. There are now, almost in every third city in South Africa, there is a literary festival, which is an amazing platform for writers. But I think that the state must make sure that writers are able to write peacefully, meaning that you, they, they, they support residency programs, which we need, which we lack like back home. We don't really have residency programs in South Africa. Um, they also have to make sure that the books that we are writing are available at all libraries across the country. The other thing would be creative writing education, which I think we, we, we need to pay a lot of attention to. At the moment, not much attention has been given to creative writing education. I think writers, especially writers in indigenous languages, must be exposed to creative writing education. So far, very few universities in South Africa are offering programs in creative writing. And all those programs are in English. And writers who write in Isizulu, Setswana, Shangan, and so on, do not have that advantage. I hope that the state will make it possible with the funds. What surprised me about this city is the appreciation of literature and writers. We struggle to have audiences for our readings in South Africa. And when there is a little audience, you actually work very hard to get it there. You, you, you work hard in terms of publicity to get it there. You get all your friends to invite everybody to get there. And still, you don't get the kind of audiences that I have seen in Iowa City. So that is quite amazing. But another thing that surprised me, I was really, really surprised by this, a sense of, of safety 
in the city. I come from a city, from from a country where there is a high level of crime, and we are advised all the time: don't open your windows, don't put your valuables in plain sight, and so on. And in Iowa City, I saw people sitting with their Chromebooks in the park, students mainly sitting with their Chromebooks in their parks and and working there. It is amazing. I never expected that. It pleasantly surprised me. Writers must be mindful of the fact that they are witnesses to the truth. When the world has run out of people to trust, they must at least trust the written word. Thank you. Thank you.